Hey guys, welcome to a quick crash course on CSS Flexbox. So many of you probably know what Flexbox is and that's fine. This will help you brush up on your skills a little bit. But this video is more for beginners that know CSS but want to get into using Flexbox in their projects. Uh, I did get a request for this and I figured it'd be something a bit different. A nice break from the JavaScript and PHP videos. All right, so uh, before we begin, I just want to mention my website, traversymedia.com, where you can find all of my tutorials, videos, uh, free courses, premium courses by Ajuanix, source code, and more. All right, so check that out. All right, so what the hell is Flexbox? It's also called the Flexible Box Model. Uh, it's basically a layout mode or, or model that provides an easy and clean way to arrange items within a container. So if you've used CSS for a while, you've probably been using the old block model where you assign widths, whether it's a percentage or a fixed width, uh, and then you use floats to arrange items on the page. If you want, for instance, three boxes in a row. Um, and then you'd have to factor in your margins and your padding and you have to do all types of math to figure out how much margin, how much width you should have. And it can get kind of it can be kind of a pain in the ass. So Flexbox has basically taken care of all of this. There's no floats at all. Um, it's responsive and mobile friendly. Okay, and it looks good on smaller screens. And of course, you can use media queries to um, to make that work even better. Positioning child elements is much, much easier. And flex containers, uh, their margins don't collapse with the margins of their contents. And then another great feature is that if you want to change the order of the elements, okay, so for instance, if you have a main column and then a sidebar and another sidebar, if you want to change the order of that, you don't have to edit the HTML. You don't have to move the first sidebar over to the, to the other side if you want the main column in the middle. All right, you can simply assign an order property. And we'll get into all of this as we move along. All right, so some of the concepts of the flexible box model is the ability to alter item width and height to best fit in its containers available free space. Flexbox is also direction agnostic. All right, and this is different than the block model, which is vertically biased, and then the inline, which is horizontal, horizontally biased. Flexbox works well for both. All right, Flexbox was created for small scale layouts, and there's another standard called Grids, which is geared more towards uh, larger scale stuff. Uh, this will work similar to the way that Twitter Bootstrap Grid system works. All right, but that's for another video. So this is a quick diagram of how Flexbox looks. Basically, we have a main container wrapper. All right, uh, the flex container, and this is the element that we assign the display property. We assign we we assign display flex, and then inside that we have child elements or flex items. So there's certain properties that go on the container, and certain ones that go on the items themselves. There's also an x and y axis, or in in flexbox it's called the main and the cross axis, and um, we can use certain alignment properties to position items here and, and to to change directions and um, vertically and horizontally align all kinds of stuff all right but it's it's kind of hard to explain just talking and showing you a diagram um, so we will get into the code and I'll show you how it works so here are the main flex properties okay so we have display flex okay you can also do inline flex this goes on that container element. We can assign the direction, so flex direction row, which would be uh, horizontally, or we could do column, which would assign it vertically. Flex wrap, so we can define if we want the, uh, the elements to wrap or not. So if we make the browser window smaller, should they go down to the next line or, or not. Flex basis is basically the same as width. Okay, you can assign a width to uh, to each of your flex items. Justify content. Okay, so this basically, uh, if we want it to align to the left, we can say flex start. The right would be flex end. We can also do center. And then we have a bunch of other alignments to align self. 
this basically allows the uh, default alignment to be overridden for individual flex items. We also have align items. This is the behavior for how the flex items are laid out along the cross axis. Uh, and then we have align content, which aligns on the cross axis. Now flex grow and flex shrink. Basically we can uh, we can make different elements in the row different sizes. So we may want a main column that takes up let's say three spaces and then the two smaller sidebars to take up one. And flex is basically both of these put together. Uh, but we'll get into that as we move along. We also have order so we can uh, change the order of elements without actually having to change the HTML. Alright, so enough of these slides. Let's go ahead and jump into some code and I'll show you how this works. Alright, so what I have here, guys, I have the scratchpad.io console where uh, we can edit our HTML and CSS and this will live reload. And what we have is, if we look at the HTML, we have a div with the class of container1 and that's wrapped around three other divs with the class of box1, box2, and box3 and they all have just an h3 and a paragraph. All right, and then up here, if we look, we have our styles. We have the container one, which doesn't have any styles in it. Um, container one div, I did this just so that we can have a border and some padding around each one of these boxes. And then we have some empty, our box one, box two, and box three. Now, let's say that we want these to be side by side and take up the whole width. So all we have to do is go to the container element and say display flex and you can see that it just automatically puts them side by side we didn't have to put in any floats or anything like that and that may be very well what the only thing that you want to do and that's fine uh, but let's go in a little further and let's assign flex oops we'll say flex one and we're going to assign flex one to all three of these elements all right, and that basically gives us the same thing. We have three even boxes. Now, if we want to, let's say, take box one and make that the main column, make that a little wider, what we could do is change that to flex two. All right, you can see that it pushed these two over, and this is now uh, larger. We could go and flex three, flex four, and so on. Actually, I think when we get to a certain length a certain width it just stops uh, but let's keep it at flex 2 all right uh, now if we wanted to take box 3 and say flex 2 we could do that as well um, but what I want to do is now show you how we can change the order of these let's say that we want this to be the main column and we want that in the middle of the two sidebars so all we would have to do is say uh, box 1 we'll say order two and two let's say order one and then three we'll say order three so now you can see box one is in the middle because we assigned order two okay two is in one and three is in three now notice that by default these are all the same height even though that this box one the text is ending up here these are still all the same height and that's by default now if we want to set these to let's say align um, to the top without you know without the, the automatic height then we could go to our container and let's say uh, we can say align items and let's set it to flex dash start. All right, now you can see that box one is shorter because it has less content. If we want to go the other way and put it towards the bottom, we could say flex end and that would move it down. All right, and I'm actually going to leave these. I'm just going to comment them out just so you guys can have this for future reference. Okay, so that'll be end, and I'm just going to wrap this in a comment. All right, um, we can also do center. So if we were to say align items center, you can see that that moves it to the center. 
All right, by default, it's actually stretch. Okay, that's that's the default. All right, let me just move this up here. Okay, so that's align items. Now, if you want to um, change the direction to go vertically instead of horizontally, horizontally is a row, vertically is a column, we could add uh, flex direction and set that to call or a column. And you can see it goes back to being a column. All right, but we do want a row, so I'm going to just put that in there. Now, this is all well and good, but what if you want to have, for one, you want to have margins, and you also want to specify the widths, all right, because right now we don't have any width specified. So what I'm going to do is go down here and go under our container one, and I'm going to just paste this in, all right, so you can see we have a div with container two, let me just fix this. So container two, and then each div inside has a class of container two box. They're all the same. I don't, for what I want to show you, I don't need to have them uh, with different class names. All right, and then let's just go ahead and add our borders and stuff to that by just saying container two div. All right, so what I want to do now is take the container two box. Remember that pertains to all three of these boxes. They all have the same class. All right, so let's go up here and just put that in there. And let's set a width and we'll set that to 30%. Okay, so you can now see that the boxes are 30% wide. Now, they're not side by side because we haven't attached them to a flex box yet. So what we need to do is just like we did with container one up here. Let's go ahead and put container two and we're going to set display to flex. OK, that puts them side by side. And notice that. Well, I guess you can't really notice it here. Let me make these a little, let's say 20. All right, so now we have 20% 20, 20 for each box, but it leaves all this room on the side here. Now, if we want to basically put margin in the middle of this so that this can spread all the way across and also have margins in the middle, then what we can do is go up to our container two, and we can use justify content. Now, by default, it's going to be flex start. Okay, notice that that didn't change anything. Um, I'm going to actually keep this stuff in a comment. So let me just uh, comment that out for you. All right, so flex start. Now, let's say we want it aligned over here. We could say flex end. Okay, that pushes it over. Let's copy that, put that up here. Now, what I would want to do in this situation is, um, actually, let's see if we do center, that puts it in the center. Okay, but we want margins in the middle, so we want to set it to space between. Okay, and you can see that that puts the margins in the middle. All right, and I'm going to actually change that to, let's say, 25 or 27. All right, we also can do space around. Now, notice with space between, there's nothing on the sides. There's no margin on the side. It's flush. But if we say space around, that's going to also add some margins on the side. All right, but I'm going to keep it at space between. I didn't mean to save it. Now, using width is fine. It does work. But if you want to make it more, uh, I guess, flexy, then you want to use flex basis. OK, 
okay, which does the same exact thing, it's just a more flexbox way to do it. Okay, rather than width, use flex basis. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just release this full screen mode here, and I'm going to drag this. Oh, you know what? It's not. Ah, this isn't a good platform to give you this example. Oh, yeah, it is. I can just go like that. So as I make this smaller, let's say we're, we're looking at this on a, a smartphone or a tablet, these columns are way too small. Uh, we don't want to have a three column layout when you're on a smartphone. So to fix this, what we can do is just use a simple media query around our containers. So up here at the top, let's say um, media I don't like this editor. So media and let's say uh, min width, and we'll set this to let's say seven seven hundred and sixty eight pixels. All right, and what we want to do is take the container one and two and cut that, and let's put that in there. All right, now when we're at a certain width, now this is a lot, this is zoomed in, so um, this looks like it's a lot more than 768 pixels wide, but it's not. If I actually zoom out, yeah, that's so that's about right. So when we get to a certain point, our columns go away. Okay, so on a mobile device, it would look more like this. All right, so that's an easy solution uh, to, to basically make this responsive. Let me just make this bigger again. All right. For the time being, I'm going to change this to, let's say, 468. So what about wrapping? Okay, we want to have the option to make our elements wrap. Um, so what I'm going to do is paste in another set down here. This is going to be container three, and notice I have uh, five, what is it six boxes in here. Uh, I'm just going to add the border around them too. So right here, let's say container three, uh, container three div. All right, and then what we'll do is go right here and say container three box. Okay, they all have the same class. And let's set the width or the flex basis. Okay, so we'll set that to 15%. And let's make sure we add the display flex. I'm not going to put it in the media query, this one. So container three display flex. All right, so now we have these boxes side by side and I want them to wrap. So I'm going to go to the container three and we're just going to set flex dash wrap and we're going to set that to wrap. And now you can see that at a certain point, this one gets pushed down there. All right, and if I were to make this smaller, you can see that it's going to wrap up into the point where we actually have two rows, two rows of, of three boxes. All right, so that's wrap, and I'd probably want to set that width to, uh, let's see, let's set it to 10 or 12, yeah. All right. And then we may want to add, let's see, space between justify content for that as well. All right. So that's the gist of Flexbox. Hopefully it helps some of you guys out. Um, I will make this code available on my website, traversemedia.com, so that you guys can kind of use it as a reference when you want to use it in your projects but um, yeah so if you like this video please subscribe leave a like comment leave a dislike if you didn't like it 
and I will see you next time.